If you frequent the educational sector of YouTube, you may be familiar with this sum, and the surprising result that it's not only finite, but equal to minus 1 12th. Now, if you found that hard to believe or are skeptical at all, then that's good, because this series clearly blows up to infinity. So where do people get this minus 1 12th thing from? Well, as it turns out, this doesn't come from nowhere, and is actually a very important part of the sum. However, to show this, I need to jump pretty deep into some of the math behind it, so if that's not really your thing, you can just skip ahead to this time in the video for the punchline. Okay, so if you've seen this sum before, you've probably seen this weird property show up by adding and subtracting a bunch of different sums. While I won't go so far as to say this is wrong, it's certainly misleading, since doing pretty much anything with sums like this is typically a big mathematical no-no. So instead, what we'll do is force the series to converge, but do so in a way that we can recover the original sum by taking a limit. One great way to do this is by introducing an exponential into the sum, where we can get back to the sum we actually want by taking a to zero. Now, to evaluate this sum, we need to utilize some trickery. First, we can recognize that we can rewrite the term in the sum as a derivative on a. Next, since the derivative is on a and the sum is on n, we can flip the order and take the sum first. But this sum is just a geometric series, which converges to 1 over 1 minus e to the a. Now we can take the derivative, and we find that our sum is indeed convergent, and gives e to the a divided by 1 minus e to the a squared. But unfortunately, this still isn't very helpful. When we take a to 0 here, the denominator just vanishes, and the sum blows up, as we should expect. However, we can still get some information out of this. We can expand this in terms of a and recognize that any terms proportional to a or higher powers of a will vanish when we take a to 0. When we expand this, we find that the sum is equal to 1 over a squared minus 1 over 12 plus higher orders of a. See anything familiar? There's our factor of minus 1 over 12. So we can see that when we take the limit of a to 0, we recover our original sum, and the sum goes to infinity as our intuition told us it should. But we get a finite contribution of minus 1 12th. So really, we should say that the sum over natural numbers is infinity minus 1 over 12. To find this result, we had to force the series to be finite so that we could get a sensible answer. This process is known as regularization, but this particular way of regularizing is not the only one. For example, adding and subtracting sums from this divergent one is another way of regularizing the series. It just so happens that the divergences end up canceling out and you only see the finite piece. What's interesting is that no matter how we choose to regularize the series, we always end up with a finite piece of minus 1 over 12. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, Mr. Physics Man, this is great and all, but what does this have to do with particle theory? And I'm so glad you asked. As it turns out, infinities show up pretty frequently when doing particle physics calculations using quantum field theory. And this is a problem, mainly because the infinities show up where they really shouldn't, like for an electron just flying through space. The nice thing is, though, that for well-behaved theories, we can usually separate out these infinities like we did before with the factor of 1 over a squared. We can then add in counter terms in the equations that describe the physics to just cancel off these divergences and leave us with only finite contributions to the physical processes. This is known as the renormalization of a theory. But hold on. We can't just arbitrarily add in terms to our theories just to get rid of answers we don't like, can we? Well, we kind of can in most physical theories as long as it doesn't change the underlying physics. And in fact, this is guaranteed to be the case as long as we absorb these counter terms into free parameters of the theory, like charges and masses of particles. So the trade-off is that our theory works, and works very well typically 
but it's impossible to predict the values of these parameters. Even more interesting is that a result found from renormalization is that charges and masses tend to be energy dependent quantities as opposed to the constants which they were originally assumed to be. So even though the calculations in particle physics as well as the sum over natural numbers technically give infinite results, it doesn't mean we can't gain any interesting information from them. As long as we are careful how we treat these infinities, we can extract the meaningful finite results in a consistent way. However, it's good to remember that the divergences still exist, even if we hid them somewhere else. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, and you feel like helping out the channel, consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment down below.